from Midland, Odessa, and Big Spring. We're Basin Trusted, Basin Proud. This is Local 2 News Good Day in HD. Well, the rain chances are finally coming to a close, and that means rising temperatures in our near future. I've got the details on the week ahead coming up in just a bit. Also, an Odessa baby found dead in Arkansas. We have new details to this tragic story. And more Texans stand behind Donald Trump on one particular issue, what it is and how Texas legislators are responding. Then, petitioning to stay parked, a new food truck ordinance making it harder to find your favorite mobile restaurant. The city now considering changes. Good morning and welcome into Good Day. I'm Rebecca Jeffrey. Thanks for joining us this morning. Today is Wednesday, June 29th, 2016. And we begin this morning with new details surrounding an Odessa baby found dead in central Arkansas. Officials now saying the four-month-old was picked up in Odessa last Thursday, the 23rd, by the great aunt Diana O'Brien and her husband Jeff High. The couple now arrested and facing charges of endangering the welfare of a minor and creating a risk of death. Reports show Arkansas police called to do a welfare check at an apartment complex Saturday in Searcy. When they arrived and were welcomed into the home, Hyde told the officer, quote, we have a dead baby. Authorities say O'Brien was sitting disoriented on the couch, concealing the infant under her arm. Officials say the child's body has been sent for an autopsy at the Arkansas State Crime Lab. While still developing this morning in Midland, MPD on the hunt for a suspect connected to a deadly apartment stabbing. We're told the violent crime happened last night at the Summer Hill apartment complex in the 3000 block of Midland Drive. When police arrived on scene, the suspect had fled and one man was left with stab wounds. He was rushed to the hospital where he later died. Police now searching for the person responsible. If you have any information, call the Midland Police Department. Now, your weather on the tubes. Sponsored by Planet Fitness. Hard turn here. Let's send it over to meteorologist John Mayer with a check of our forecast. Good morning, John. Well, good morning, Rebecca. Now, we're seeing a bit of a change in our forecast today, finally getting rid of some of the rain chances that we've seen over the past couple of days. Instead, we're just looking at a few clouds out there early on this morning, but a chance to get rid of those by the time we move towards this afternoon. That means more sunshine, clearing skies, and all that sun going to help to warm us up in a pretty big way towards this afternoon, beginning to see some of those rising highs over the next few days as we get back to where, well, where we should be by late June, early July, going to continue to see those rising temperatures 69 early on this morning but get ready for some mid to upper 90s by the time we move into this afternoon and more of the same over the next several days of the latest on your full forecast coming up in just a bit John, thank you. The U.S. Senate blocked the $1.1 billion bill to fight the Zika virus, directly affecting Texans. The 52 to 48 vote fell short of the 60 it needed. The bill would have cut $750 million from other health programs to help develop a vaccine and pay for mosquito control. Democrats opposed the bill, saying it was negotiated between House and Senate Republicans with little input from them. To help pay for the bill, funding would have been reduced for birth control at Planned Parenthood and weakening the EPA regulations on clean water. Lawmakers now have just two weeks to reach a new deal before going on a seven-week summer recess. In Amarillo, three people are missing, one injured after a head-on collision involving two trains. It happened Tuesday morning just east of the Panhandle. Plumes of black smoke were visible for miles. Kelly James has the details. This is what many Panhandle residents have been staring at much of the day. Plumes of smoke emanating from the wreckage of the two BNSF trains that collided head on. BNSF engineer Joe Faust says it's likely that one of the crew members on one of the trains jumped before the collision. More than likely, I would say that would be a safe assumption. He was able to uh, get off the train before they collided. That crew member was taken to an Amarillo hospital with non life threatening injuries and is in stable condition. As for the other three, the fire hampered rescue efforts. The main goal right now is to get the fire out. Uh, firefighters are working around the clock to get that extinguished. Uh, we still won't have any confirmations on the uh, people inside until they have extinguished the fires. Investigators have not yet determined exactly what happened, but Faust says one of the trains did have positive train control, or PTC, 
that allows the railroad to control the train remotely. There was PTC technology on the eastbound train. Uh, however, the, where this incident occurred, the PTC technology was not enforced. Since the collision occurred so close to Panhandle, residents on the east side of town were mandatorily evacuated. That order was lifted later in the day, though, and residents were asked to simply shelter in place. So there is no hazmat release, um, but of course the burning diesel does pose a little bit of an inhalation hazard. BNSF officials say the cargo on both trains was household items. And over in San Antonio, two men found dead in an empty crude oil tanker. The manager on scene told Bear County investigators that the men were getting ready to clean an empty crude oil tanker when they were overcome by the fumes. When uh, employees went to go check on the two men, they were found unconscious inside the tanker. One was in the rear and one was closer to the front. The employees put on breathing apparatus and entered the tanker to pull the first man out. Now, the medical examiner has not released the names of the two men at this time, but say they were 23 and 24 years old. Both OSHA and the sheriff's office are now investigating. Closer to home, after being with Midland ISD for six years, Superintendent Dr. Ryder Warren heading to the Fort Worth area, leaving behind a district facing many challenges ahead, including low test scores and budget cuts. Local 2's Casey Jones tells us what's next. This name might not be here much longer. Current Midland ISD Superintendent Ryder Warren was hired in 2010, but released a statement Monday night announcing his departure, saying in part, My family and I will start another chapter in our lives, but we will always remember Midland and MISD as a wonderful experience. Warren's decision leaves the school board with one to make as well. First, we have to find an interim superintendent. Uh, and then we have to find a search firm who will help us find a new superintendent. Karen Nicholson, vice president of the school board, has been involved with superintendent searches in the past. She says the district calls in outside help to find the right person for the job. And then I've been a part of two searches before this one. And we've always paid a, a search firm to help us find a superintendent. I'm told that firm reviews resumes, speaks to community members, and seeks the most qualified candidate, who Nicholson tells me will have lots of work to do. Uh, and we're having to cut uh, positions so that we won't have as many teachers, particularly on the secondary level. The class size is going to be too big. Uh, at the elementary level, it's going to be a little bit too big there, too. C.C. Jones, Local 2 News. We are your local election headquarters, and a majority of Texas voters now saying they want to see more Trump-like immigration policies. That's according to a new UT Texas Politics Project poll released Monday morning. Anna Wernicke is in Austin with more on what Texans are saying needs to be done to tackle illegal immigration. The nearly 2,000-mile-long stretch along the Texas-Mexico border is only a small portion of the nation's total border land. Where are you headed to? But according to the Center for Immigration Studies, it's where half of all immigration enforcement takes place. It's not a huge shock. So it's no surprise to James Henson that immigration and border security are top concerns for Texans, according to the most recent UT Texas Politics Project poll. Republicans have adopted positive attitudes towards Donald Trump's proposals so quickly. But what is shocking, he says, is the type of policies Texans are now supporting. We're going to build the wall and we're going to stop it. According to the poll, 52% of Texans agree with Trump's idea of building a wall. And 53% say they support banning Muslims who are not U.S. citizens from entering the United States. At the beginning of the campaign, these were seen as somewhat extreme. Now that Donald Trump has won the nomination, Republicans are getting on board with these with these kinds of, of proposals. National security is the biggest issue. Kent Hance, a former U.S. congressman from West Texas, says the concern of border security extends beyond protecting the state's physical border. There are people out there throughout the world that they go to sleep every night praying they kill us and because of, we, we disagree with them on issues. Anna Warnicke, Local 2 News. Anna, thanks. Republican state leaders have pushed the issue of immigration to the top of their agenda. During the 84th legislative session, Governor Abbott approved an $800 million border security budget, more than doubling the budget from years past. 
Speaking of security, Odessa police planning to increase patrols during the upcoming 4th of July weekend. Remember, it's illegal to sell, possess, or light off fireworks within city limits. Adults caught breaking these laws could face a $400 fine. Minors risk a $260 fine. Staying in Odessa, homeowners, your stormwater rates will soon increase. This comes as council passes the ordinance in a 3-2 to two vote Tuesday night. Everyone is affected except for residents who own a home under 1,000 square feet. As for those with larger property, you'll see a slight increase. The stormwater program mandated by the TCEQ, it's unfunded mandate the city is required to carry out. The more water you run off of your property, i.e. don't allow to percolate into the ground, the higher your rate would be. A second reading will be heard at the next city council meeting Tuesday, July 12th. And from that point, the ordinance will go into effect within 30 days. Sticking with city council, food trucks typically move around. The one mobile eatery in Odessa usually stays in one spot, which is now unlawful. Odessa City Council passed an ordinance at their last meeting, forcing food trucks to stay on the move. Local 2's Tyler Wesner has the story. A shake served curbside at Grant and 10th Street in Odessa. For us, it directly affects us. This food truck stays parked here majority of the time, something City Council wants to change. Some of these food trucks have contracts or leases with the property owners of parking there, so it's kind of like you're paying rent for half a year. Curbside Bistro co-owner Alejandro Barrientos started a petition after Council passed a new ordinance targeting his business, stating that food trucks can't park in the same spot for more than 24 hours. It not only affects us, but affects a lot of other food trucks that we know that have been working and grinding day in and day out at a certain location to build up their clientele and build up their business. At Curbside Bistro, they own the plot of land their truck stays at. With the petition, Barrientos hopes to start a conversation with City Council on how this new rule hurts their business. We reached out to the community. I just checked our phone. We're at 26,000 people reached, over 200 shares, uh, 800 people have actually signed the petition on online. After voicing their concerns at Tuesday night City Council meeting, Barrientos says city leaders will consider changing the ordinance at their next meeting. I think it was one of those laws that was put in place without them really knowing the consequences of what was going to happen. Tyler Wessner, Local 2 News. Tyler, thanks. Barriento says fans of his food truck came out to the city council meeting to voice their support for his cause. Meanwhile, over in Midland, city council there held their second and final reading on a new taxi ordinance, and it passed. It's meant to make it easier for taxi services to compete with Uber and Lyft. The current taxi ordinance has not been updated in several decades. The new set of rules now allows taxi drivers and clients to negotiate the price of a ride and also loosens the restrictions on what vehicles can be driven. We just tried to even the, the playing field a little bit with the fees and the rates and then to also allow a little bit of flexibility uh, in negotiating the rates. The new law goes into effect within the next few weeks. Now, your weather on the twos. Sponsored by Planet Fitness. John, I'm interested to see what else will change. Because I know yeah. with Uber, their app is so convenient. You can oh, see yeah, what yeah, cars yeah. around you. So I wonder if that'll be the next change. I don't know. It's, you never it's, know. It, it is interesting. It's nice that we have those sorts of services. Mm -hmm. It gives us sort of a few more options, options than we might otherwise have. So, yeah, it's going to be something to keep an eye on for sure. Do we have any more options aside from this heat? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, it's going to be pretty warm out there moving forward over the next few days. Uh, really starting this afternoon, this will be the beginning of when we start to see some of those warmer temperatures arriving for us. We've got some cloud cover early on, but that's not going to last much longer, and that means a chance for clear skies, sunny skies, and rising temperatures. We didn't see any rainfall make its way into Midland International yesterday, though we did have at least a smattering of some of those showers and storms uh, really off and on throughout the course of the day yesterday, and that gave us at least a little bit of relief. Didn't see those temperatures rise quite as high, but even with the rain, uh, surprisingly, our pollen numbers didn't really go up. So that's the good news. At least we're looking at some low indices on our health index. Things are looking all right out there. But the question is going to be how much warmer could we get? Well, we hit 93 yesterday. We got a chance to blow past that at least a little bit this afternoon. Latest on that coming up after the break.